big Brexiteer, James Dyson, who was at the forefront of Brexit, had a fiery meeting with our Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, this week. And just wait for it. He's frustrated by the brain drain which has been caused by Brexit, causing a crippling shortage of qualified engineers. And not only that, he's also really upset about the Brexit-induced rocketing corporation tax. Well, what a shame that James Dyson didn't listen to the experts who predicted this would happen. And just to remind you, James Dyson backed Brexit, then moved his headquarters to Singapore. He sued a journalist for calling him a hypocrite for doing so and lost. And then on top of all of that, he backed the economic policies of Liz Truss and Quasi Quarteng. And then just have a listen further on in this film about what he said about Jean-Claude Juncker. Exit. How's it going in your view? Well, it's not going very well at the moment, is it? But uh, I hope we leave. I hope we leave on time. I'm very optimistic about it because I think we can make very good trade arrangements with the United States, uh, with Far Eastern countries, with the Commonwealth. Um, and really, that's where the fast expanding markets are. I can sort of almost hear a lot of farmers' jaws hitting the floor on this. When you talk about trade deals with America and Canada, they just mm. see cheap food flooding in from there and possibly putting them out of business. Well, it's no cheaper than European food. And well, uh, American we, and Canadian produced scale is, is pretty cheap, isn't yeah, it? Yes, but it's not good quality. But I, yes, I think there is a big issue. Maybe we have to put duty on imported food in order to, for British farmers to be at a level playing field state. Instead of being tied within Europe, we can now do trade agreements with um, countries all over the world. And by the way, the Commonwealth countries who we discarded when we went into Europe, they're great trading nations to be tied with. And, uh, you know, if India, Australia, Canada, these are, these are very, very wealthy and wonderful trading nations. And to re-engage with them directly, I think, will be a huge and it's a fantastic opportunity. India, you know, fastest growing economy in the world. Um, to re-engage with India and have a trade agreement with India would be a really major step forward. And Europe is a declining part of world trade. It's now down to about 12% and in about five years' time it'll be 9% of world trade. It's a very important market for us. Uh, we're one of the fastest growing companies in Europe, but it's, it's only 15% of our, our trade. And, and the, the fastest growing sector is, of course, in the Far East, China and, and Far Eastern countries, where we're growing by about 80 or 90 percent a year. And that, that's where the opportunities are, not within Europe. You won't know this, but Jean-Claude Juncker this morning has just said, Britain will regret Brexit soon. As somebody who, who manifestly pushed Brexit, do you have a scintilla of regret about how it's worked out? Well, if, if John Gordon Juncker is saying that, he's always wrong, so he'll be he's wrong again, and he's absolutely wrong this time. So no regrets from you? None at all. I think it's an absolutely wonderful opportunity to, to remove trade barriers with the rest of the world uh, and to, to focus ourselves on what are the fast-growing markets in the world, the really exciting ones. A month ago, was urging the Chancellor to get the Treasury to release more optimistic forecasts, you'll remember. And uh, this weekend, it was reported that in his role as an investment advisor, he's told investors to get their money out of Britain fast. So Redwood and Dyson being your Brexit heroes of the day. One, suggesting that companies like his should pay less tax. James Dyson is worth just shy of £8 billion, personally. Uh, while simultaneously suggesting that people like him should be able to hire and fire staff more easily. Uh, he transferred production of his vacuum cleaners to Malaysia in 2002 while pledging that the washing machines would stay in Britain. Um, they moved a year later and he's just opened a massive research and development facility in Singapore. But Paul Dacre in the Daily Mail describes him as the boss who's been speaking up for Britain. Strange time. Let's be bold and show a spirit of independence, enterprise and optimism as regards Brexit. Sir James Dyson last week in the French publication Les, Les Echos. Car manufacturers complain all the time, but there is no problem without a solution. And now the normally loquacious, it means talkative, Sir James, refusing to comment to the media yesterday, as it is revealed that having been backed with £16 million of taxpayers' money for research and development of an electric vehicle that it was thought would be carried out at a new campus in RAF Hullivington in Wiltshire, close to Dyson's HQ in Malmesbury, the work instead goes to Singapore. 
And this is the man who's consistently talked up Brexit. He says post-Brexit Britain is not the place to build electric vehicles. Hmm. Strangely, Geely of China is building the hybrid London taxis and vans in Coventry. Nissan is building the Leaf, the world's best-selling electric car in Sunderland, and BMW will bring in production of the electric Mini in Oxford. I see, Sir James. So you couldn't be bothered to speak yesterday. But you're right, and Geely, Nissan and BMW are all wrong. And you've got half the way there with £16 million worth of our money. Good work, Sir James. So can we assume that Sir James Dyson is only concerned with his business rather than the population of the UK and their food security and food supply? As always, look forward to your comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.